Good afternoon shop handmade. It's that time of the week again and today I've got with me Kirsty from Broody Designs. So if you are watching us then do say hi in the comments. Don't forget to allow StreamYard in. I can never work out which corner it's on for you. If you can, do let them know who you are otherwise your comments we won't be able to tell who you are when your comments come up. If you are watching us on replay, don't forget hashtag replay, hashtag sorry I missed you. But for now, let's get over and have a chat with Kirsty. So, hi Kirsty. Hello. Thanks for, hello, thanks for joining us this week. So, let's get kicked off. Tell us a bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm, I've an, I'm an artist. I've got my own business with my husband. Uh, he does IT work and I do all the artwork. Um, yes, and I have a stall at the Shambles Indoor Market selling selling greetings cards of my work and some prints and originals as well. Oh, so that's the one in Devizes, I want to say, or am I thinking of the wrong Shambles? Oh, this is Stroud. Stroud, yeah. Stroud. Yeah. I say sometimes I forget where I've connected with people and think, well, hang on, where are they from? Oh, so you so you create and you sell in there. So does yeah. you and your husband you and your husband, um, any children, any fur babies at all? No children. Um, quite a lot of fur and feather babies. Oh um, yes. <laughs> we've got twelve chickens, eleven hens and a cockerel. And wow. that's where the name of the business came from because we weren't sure what we were going to call it when we started off. And at the time, we had a broody hen. And my dad said, we'll call it Broody Designs. And we thought, oh, yes. So that's how that came about. Um, and we've got a cat and an ex-racing greyhound. Wow. And are, they as le are greyhounds as lazy as people make out? Oh, yes. <laughs> name is the uh, 45 mile an hour couch potato. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lynn. Thanks for coming on and joining us. Yes. Yeah, so, and you, so you chicken, do you, you've got, obviously you've got a reasonable amount of space to keep them. Do you get eggs from them, anything like that? Yes, yes, we uh, get eggs. Sometimes when we get a surplus, we sell them. But mostly I just give them away to the neighbours as kind of thank you for putting up with the cockerel crowing. <laughs> <laughs> Does he get you up very early? <laughs> Not really. He's, he's quite good. He's a very old boy now. He's over 10 years old, which is quite wow. unusual for a chicken. Um, so he doesn't crow as much as the youngsters would. Yeah. <laughs> So, a little bit of fun, although we might have answered all the possibilities for this one just now. Tell us three random things about you that people wouldn't know. Oh, gosh. Um, I suppose I was born in Epping, Epping Forest. Uh -huh. um, oh, gosh, it's quite tricky, isn't it? Um, I can land an aeroplane. <gasps> what, pro proper passengers. Or just oh, little, no, little, little ones. Two, two, two seater one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you do much? Do you do much flying, or flying, or is it something you used to do? Or it's something I used to do. I, I flew when I was an air cadet, and yeah. then after I graduated from university, I joined my local squadron as adult star, and yeah. I was a sergeant for about I don't know ten years and used to go flying a bit with the RAF. So, uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So exciting times then. <laughs> <laughs> so you've told me about how when you were looking for the name of your business, that sort of hens helped out with that. But how did you sort of first start your business? Um, well, after I graduated, I was um, signed off sick for a while. And so that meant I couldn't really go into the profession that I did my degree in yeah. um, and I've always done artwork and so I thought oh I'll just try and make that viable as a business yeah and things have kind of grown from there I guess yes I um when I first started doing my market store um in the shambles I only had 
about 12 or 15 card designs yeah um and so yeah 10 11 years on i've now got 157 different wow. cards, uh, all from my original artwork wow that is inc that really is incredible and do you have a sort of so you make all your own prints from your artwork you don't say like sell your artwork to greetings card companies or anything like that no no i just um do the originals uh they're generally a3 or a4 then i scan them into the computer reduce them down into card size yeah and i get them done at a local printers that's only Oh, maybe about half a mile away so I keep it all local that is really nice actually being able to keep it all local I think hi Jackie so Jackie's just popped on to join us as well Hello, um, Jackie. don't forget any questions just pop them in the comments and we'll get to those so what do you think you most in you enjoy most about running your own business um, I think it's the flexibility and not having to report to any bosses at all. Um, you know, so I can choose when I work. If I get inspired in the middle of the night, I might get out of bed and start doing a bit of sketching or something. Um, so, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, the only thing I'm really tied to is the market, but that's on Fridays and Saturdays. So, so it works yeah. out well. Yeah. So, you know, there's those two fixed days where you have to, you have to be out doing but the rest i guess you sort of do it at, you do it at home do you sort of ever get i mean where do you draw your inspiration from is it all up here or do you sort of go around and look at lots of things and um mainly because when i do it's mainly vehicle and aviation artwork that i do so i'll go to vintage vehicle shows and air shows and take photographs and then from those photographs, I'll um, do the artwork. And that nicely brings us on to, let's have a look at some of the, th I know you've got a few things to show us. So let's have a look at the at those. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've made a bit of a mistake. I've got an exhibition in Socialite Cafe in Stroud at the moment. So most of my originals are up there. Right. In the storeroom at market. So I've got some... I've got some originals here and I've got some prints. Okay. Uh, so maybe maybe we'll start with some motorbikes, perhaps? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll just get up and grab some. So yes, right, I'll just uh, I've got them here. I don't know how I don't know how I, these are gonna come out, whether their light's gonna shine on them. Uh if I can oh I don't know. and yeah if the light's not too bad it's actually getting them into the center of the screen that's it just go up a little bit more wow oh, that is so tricky. that I is see you now <laughs> <laughs> that is really incredible and just the sort of shading and detail on it so what um, media do you use i tend to use pen and ink and watercolor um so as well as the vintage ones i've got another vintage one here this is my uncle frank's motorbike Oh, oh, that's wow. a Velotech KSS. Oh, now that is a proper motorbike. <laughs> no, thank you. I do do the modern ones as well. So this is my friend Nick's bike. Don't know if that will come up. Can I see underneath? Oh yeah, I can see. I can kind of. Yeah, that's oh. it. That's, oh, that's it. it. There we go. I've got it. Yeah. Um, so that that yeah. Oh, they are incredible yes jackie she is very talented isn't she oh um, <laughs> jackie's also asked a question do you find the price how do you find the pricing between local printers and then maybe going online for your printing um i did go online once for printing but um what i'm used to with my local printer is i'll send the files to them and yeah. then they actually print me out a paper proof that I can go and see and check it's all all right. Yeah. Whereas most of the online printing companies, they don't show you a proof. They just go ahead with the print run. So if there's something slightly wrong in it, the print run's already done and you can't correct the mistake. Yeah, and um, actually that is really unusual. I've sort of 
part of my other life used to be printing leaflets and things and actually getting what they call wet prints from printer these days is actually quite unusual but particularly right. particularly with what you do i should think actually that's really important just to see what it's going to look like on that paper and everything else oh definitely yes yes so so price wise i guess any difference in price is sort of outweighed by the fact that you can just pop down the road and go in and have a look and yeah definitely yeah and during lockdown when i had some print runs done they were very good they actually delivered them to my door so that was a really good service yeah yeah and it, it's always nice to sort of use as a sort of local small businesses i mean that's one of the things i found during lockdown i do an awful lot of online shopping and if it's yeah. not something if it's something i can't get locally then i will look for a small business to buy it from rather than a huge company although i do have a teeny bit of an addiction to amazon prime but i, yeah. think, we, I think we all have don't we <laughs> well it's the convenience i think yeah it is yeah. isn't it so can you remember which was your first project that you did um first paid project i can't show it to you unfortunately because it was a leather jacket i painted for somebody <gasps> when i was about 15 um and i don't have any pictures of it unfortunately because yeah that was a bit of a long time ago um, so how did that that sounds it's very intriguing tell us more well i painted my own leather jacket that i used to wear quite a lot because i was a bit of a goth kind of like biker girl yeah. <laughs> and um i would wear that about the place and people just asked me where i had it done and then i started to get commissions yeah um yeah i've had commissions on and off since then for various bits of artwork wow so that is that is just amazing and which project do you think you're most proud of um i think the one that i've got behind me here which is quite big so i don't know how it's going to fit i'll probably be able to see a bit better oh yeah that's a bit big for the screen let's see if i can Ooh. Yeah, so it's the B-52 dropping bombs which turn into butterflies. Oh, wow! And they're mainly all British butterflies, apart from one which is a monarch, which I think is an American butterfly. Um, but this was actually used for an album cover of a local, um, a local musician. Um, and yeah, her album was called I Pray For Peace. So it was quite appropriate and she bought the original. So that was just a print. I can actually see that as an album cover, but a, in a proper LP size. Yeah. Oh, I'm, just no, show, I'm, I'm just showing my age now. So. Oh, I love vinyl records as well. I've got loads in the house. Uh, let's just yeah. turn me around a bit. Hang on. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> So have you got any sort of, of your greetings cards or anything to hand that you can show us so we can sort of see size and how they come out when you've oh, they all tucked, I, they're all tucked away, I suspect. In. Yeah, that's one thing that I forgot to do, actually, but they're all uh, A6 size. Mm -hmm. So that's a quarter of A4, so kind of standard greetings card size. Size, yeah. And um, what sort of card card do you have them printed on? Um, do you go for sort of like a recycled or sort of forest FSC certified, that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, I go for the recycled cards and it's generally, I think I do 250 to 300 grams per square inch. So they're quite sturdy. Yes, it's quite sturdy, but it has got that sort of eco conscious thing to it yeah definitely yeah. so if money were no object um you'd won the lottery the premium bonds or whatever's your thing what would be top of your crafty wish list craft wish list um i'm not quite sure actually um some really large campuses to have a go at um yeah yeah, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that. No. 
Okay. Um, so what do you think are your favourite materials to use? Um, definitely pen and ink and watercolour. I get on really well with using those. Um, and they're quite quick. I mean, I use acrylic. The one behind me, uh, that was done in acrylic. Um, so the larger paintings I tend to do in acrylic and the, the A4 motorbikes and aircraft and vehicles, I tend to just do A4 pen and ink and watercolour. So it's can act in, so for you, that can actually be quite a bit quicker than doing something, doing it, say, if you'd have done it in oils or whatever. And acrylics are actually quite reasonably friendly, aren't they? You don't need nasty thinners and things with them, oh, do yes. you? Oh, you yeah. do? No, no, they, uh, no. no, I just think, no, you don't need thinners with acrylics. But that's really why I don't use oils, because the smell is, you know, with the thinners and the oil paints, it's not very good. And one time I was um, teaching a, a young girl art and she wanted to try out different things. And yeah. so we bought a little starter set of oils and uh, started to do an oil painting. And the smell, the fumes were kind of getting to me. And I said to her, how are you feeling about the fumes? And she said, uh, oh, not too good. And I said, oh, we'll, we'll go outside. So we went outside, but even then the fumes were too much. So wow. uh, we abandoned that project. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do some teaching as well as, you know, doing your own art? Um, well, I'm qualified to do one-to-one -one training in subjects that I'm familiar with. Um, yeah. And so I have, I have just just taught the one girl because her father came to the market stall and asked if I would teach her, and yeah. I hadn't done it before. And I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. And uh, yeah, so I taught her for about two and a half years. Wow! Well, so that is something that you can. Well, obviously, the last fifteen or however many months it's been that hasn't been possible but so it's yeah. something that you could do in the future if you sort of chose to as it were yes yes if, if somebody came forward and required me then yes I might think about doing it again yeah so do you actually have um, a dedicated space where you do all your painting and everything or are you sort of up to the kitchen table type thing oh we've got um we built a studio in the back garden, so uh, I've got. I'm, I'm sitting in my end, as I call it at the moment, and then my husband's got all his computers at the other end. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we work out there, and there's a bed for the dog and a cat flat, so the cat can come and join us. And, uh, yeah. All right. So and so I so it's so it's actually quite nice that you can keep your business and your home life separate because you can almost like shut the door on it then yes yeah i'm sorry <laughs> if you can hear a bit of background noise because we've got a polycarbonate uh, roof and it's just started raining so you might hear a bit of kind of can't of hear noise. it at the moment uh, i think i might get that in a few minutes looking at the sky out there <laughs> so i'm up in swindon so uh, yeah oh, i think okay. it, i think it's doing the rounds i yes. think it's doing the rounds so do do you do any other kind of sort of craft or art apart from um, your painting not really um i used to make friendship bracelets um and things like that. I used to do a lot of work with uh, Fimo clay making models. Um, but uh, yeah, I just stopped doing that when the uh, artwork started becoming popular. Yeah, so what sort of things did you do with the Fimo clay? Um, oh, I'd make um, seahorses, um, little people doing different things. Ooh. And I'd mainly give them to people for birthday presents. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it, to be able to give that gift that you've sort of poured your heart and soul into. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you saw the lady that was on with me Thursday. It was last week. She does, she uses, she doesn't use female anymore. She started with female, but she sculpts with clay. Oh. Um and she makes these beautiful um, sort of pet statues and 
cake toppers oh. for weddings and stuff and it's like well when i tried to play with it it didn't turn out anything like that but the, <laughs> detail, the detail it's similar to the level of detail that you'd get in yours you just like even like tiny brush strokes when she paints when she paints them and all the eyes and everything have really got that depth so oh, lovely I would recommend going and have, having a look. There's yes, some yes, really, really lovely stuff. But anyway, this is your slot today. So have you got anything else to show us? Um, I've got some, I've got a couple of vehicles and aircraft. Let's have a look. I love um, seeing what everybody else is making. So here's a, uh, I think, I think maybe I might have the hang of this now. Yeah, there we go. Uh, That's it. Oh. That no, is amazing. Pink Cadillac. Hey, you can't go wrong with a can't go wrong with a pink Cadillac, can you really? Oh no. And I do do bicycles as well. Oh, hang on. That's yeah, it. So this is my husband's triathlon bike when he used to do triathlon. Wow. So just a bit of a memento. Um, I've got yeah, he's. And I've got another aircraft to show you as well. So that's an old World War One um, re reconnaissance plane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I do do animals and birds and a bit of architectural work as well. I've had a few architectural commissions. And, uh, so do you mainly paint what you're inspired to paint and what you've taken photographs of? Or do you do mainly commissions or a bit of both? Um, mainly commissions and a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, um, if if the uh, client agrees, sometimes I'll make uh, greetings cards from commissions that I've done for people. Yes. Mm. So. Yeah. And when you're not doing your painting, what other hobbies do you have? I mean, obviously, your painting is not a hobby, but do you have any hobbies? What do you get up to when you're not working away with your paints? Um, mainly spending time with the dog and the chickens and the cat. And the dog's quite young, so um, she's uh, she's coming on very well with her training, which is quite oh, good. What is she? She's an ex-racing greyhound. Oh, of course, you did tell me at the beginning. <laughs> yes. So, so she's adjusting to the change of the pace in life then. <laughs> yes definitely yes <laughs> um and i suppose you get out and go on some walks with her as well because obviously where you are there's plenty around there to get out and see oh yes definitely we're really blessed to live here i've, I've just got the common pretty much on my doorstep and there's lovely views and uh, yeah i love living here yes beautiful part of the country so let's have some so actually before we go on to the last few questions i'm not sure if it's jackie or lynn that are still on with us have either of you got any questions for kirsty um or do you want to come on live with us and just say hello do pop something in the comments so we know either way It'll take a minute or so for that to come through because there's always like the lag while they're typing and then it uploads it. So. I've just worked out how to get the comments up now, actually. And thank you. <laughs> there's some lovely comments. Thank you very much, Jackie. <laughs> um, and also, whilst they're deciding if they're going to come on and join us or not, when we finished, um, Kirsty will pop her various links into the comments so you'll be able to go and have a look at you know her website facebook group whatever you have pop all those in so people can go and check you out so all right who's still on with us <clears throat> no it looks like they don't want to come on and join us <laughs> So, so if you is there anything else, before we go on to the last sort of fun question? Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, Kirsty? Um, I've got some uh, recent um, work I've been doing um, of rainbow bridge animals. 
So people's pets that have passed away. Yeah. Um, I've just done a couple for myself. I've, I've, I've had a couple of commissions for it, but I'll just show you a couple. You don't have to come on if you don't want to, Lynn. <clears throat> but do let us know if you've got any questions. <laughs> Here's a little chipmunk that I used to have. Oh, and I yes. do them with 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 angel wings. So uh, that's little Minky, and then I've got my two previous greyhounds and the one I've got at the moment. So the two with the wings have unfortunately passed on, but the middle one, she's my current one. Oh, so wow. uh, I do those as well. Oh, nearly knocked my chair over then. <laughs> and just as a last one, I'll just show you a an architectural one i went on holiday to dorset and there were these lovely thatch cottages so i thought i'd do a painting of those although oh. it looks a bit pale on on this screen but yeah oh, that is incredible they are gorgeous aren't they lynn those oh, rainbow paintings yeah oh, they are you, they are stunning <laughs> so let's just have a bit of fun with these quick fire questions so tea, oh. or co tea or coffee definitely tea preferably or grey yes <laughs> with or without milk uh with milk actually yeah yeah different people have different views on what how to drink girl grey don't they sometimes oh, i have tried yeah. it with lemon and it's quite nice nice with lemon but i have to be in the mood for it <laughs> <laughs> netflix or audio books um i don't really do either but i'd say i prefer audio books Okay, so when you do listen to an audiobook or maybe even a podcast, what would be your sort of recommendations to give them a go? Um, I've never actually listened to one, but I would say if I was going to choose one, it would be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <clears throat> a little bit of an interest slash passion peeking out there <laughs> yeah yeah well i read the books probably when i was too young i read them when i was about eight and then the tv series came on which i thought was brilliant and it yeah. amused me because of course one of the characters arthur dent yeah. um, had this certain dressing gown he wore and my dad's called Arthur, looked quite similar to him and had the same dressing gown. <laughs> so I found that highly amusing as a child. <laughs> so, Lynn, Lynn, what else, what would you suggest then? What else would you suggest if you think Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a good choice? Just type in something else you'd suggest in the same sort of genre. Neutrals or brights? um i'd say a bit of both i think i'm not really a follower of fashion i just kind of tend to grab the first thing that i see in the wardrobe <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> and i guess because your paintings as well they're quite they're not necessarily neutral but they're natural colors aren't they they're not sort yeah. of these fluorescent pinks or anything like that Oh yeah, anything never mind Harry Potter read by Stephen Fry. Anything read by Stephen Fry. <laughs> oh yes, I agree. Stephen is very good. Yes, yes. So are you a Harry Potter fan? Um I haven't I haven't read them, but my niece is a fan. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This it's amazing, isn't it? How you know how much longevity it's got because you know, like my I can remember my now 25 year old nephew having Harry Potter books when he was about 10 and he still oh loves goodness. and he still absolutely loves it. So yeah. <laughs> um, make for yourself or someone else. Um, I do prefer making for other people, although I get incredibly nervous when I finished a commission. And I've shown it to the client and then I'm waiting for their response. I get really nervous then. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think I, I kind of quite like that as well. Mm -hmm. 
so so how does that sort of process work do you send them like a photograph or, or do they come around and view it and do you I give them the opportunity to make any sort of ask for any tweaks or changes yeah i um i send them a a, a scan of, of what i've done uh kind of like in reduced size i send that via email and then they say they kind of say whether they like it or not and then depending on where they live they'll come to the market and collect it or i'll put it in the post recorded delivery yes yeah so it's that waiting for that email to ping back then <laughs> yes. Say, no, yes. and sometimes i'll see the email come through and think oh gosh they've replied and then i might have to just take five minutes make myself a cup of tea and then get the courage to read the email <laughs> which is a bit silly really but that's how it works with me <laughs> i think a lot of us are like that that whole you know is anything i make good enough for people and actually i think we're all a lot more talented than we give ourselves credit for yeah so it can be nerve-wracking can't it lynn just you know here's that whole you know you've poured part of yourself into whatever you make and then just waiting for that sort of feedback can be really quite scary yeah definitely yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the last one do you prefer summer or winter um i'd say i i sorry it's not in the question but i prefer spring and autumn i like the change in the seasons i think that's marvelous and especially um spring i know in lockdown a lot of people have been growing their own veg and flowers and things and i really love planting things and then watching them germinate and then they grow and then you can harvest whatever they are beans or whatever and uh, yeah I, I i like the changes in the seasons yeah so it's almost like that new beginning and then everything almost hibernating through the winter as it were yeah yeah <laughs> yes well um unless anyone has got any more questions for us i'm not sure if that's jack has come back on or if that's somebody else on with us um if, unless anybody else has got any questions or if you've got anything else you want to share with us or tell us about what you do kirsty at all um one time I, I was lucky enough to be selected for the Guild of, the Guild of Aviation Artists exhibition at the Mal Gallery in London. And this is the only really bright thing that I've done. But I'll just show you this, see if it will work. Turn it the right way up. All right, let's see if that... Wow. Yeah, so it's kind of like an Andy Warhol one of the Eurofighter Typhoon. But that's a bit reflective, so I'll put that down again. So that must, that must have been very nerve-wracking. So what did you have to do? Um, or did you go up and were presented? And well, I had to first of all um, take the painting to London to be to see if it would be selected. And I'd already been told that it would probably get in. I just wasn't sure whether it would. Um, so then the painting was selected, they kept hold of it for the hanging and then there was a kind of grand opening of the exhibition to the public and you could bring uh, relatives as well to come and see and uh, yes. yeah that was really interesting to see all the different work that was there, there were thousands of paintings there. Um, so I felt really privileged to, you know, have been selected to take part. Yeah. Yes, definitely. That must be, it must have been sort of like a real honour to sort of be selected for something like that. So that is very different from your usual style. So um, was that done specifically because you were thinking of entering for that event or? No, I just um, thought, oh, I'll, I just had the idea to do it. So I thought I would do it. And then um, I had a stall at the Royal International Air Tattoo. Yeah. And it was quite funny because this guy came along and he saw that painting and he said, um, oh, have you entered the Guild of Asia Aviation Artists Exhibition? And I said, oh, no, 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 I'm not good enough. 
And he said, oh, I think you should. And I said, oh, no, no, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And he said, I'm telling you now, if you enter that painting, it'll get in. And I was like, oh, OK, then. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you had the nod kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, even so, I mean, that in itself must have been just somebody coming up to you and saying, right, enter it must have been pretty. <sighs> Oh, I was I was very surprised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but especially if you know being approached at somewhere like the Air Tattoo, where there tends to be a lot of hype and excitement. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, oh, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could manage to run a store at the Air Tattoo. I'd be wanting to watch everything going on. I suppose you kind of get a bird's eye view, really. <laughs> yeah, and also we, I found that um, when the really, really interesting stuff was displaying, like for example, when the Vulcan was flying with the red arrows, yeah, all of the um, people visiting would just stop what they were doing and watch the displays. And all the store holders would come out from their stalls and get to a vantage point and uh, uh, yeah. to have a look. So, uh, yeah. So, is there going to be one this year? No, not this year. I'm not. Next year, hopefully, depending on what happens with coronavirus. Um, yeah. hopefully next year it'll go ahead yeah but well, I mean it's just so so massive I haven't been for a few years but it is just so huge I guess they just couldn't this year there's still too many sort of unknowns as it were oh yes definitely yeah yeah and it's hard work if you do have a stall there because you have to be on your stall at 7 30 in the morning and then you don't close down until 7.30 in the evening. So it's three long days oh. on the stall. <laughs> oh, so even on the Friday, you have to be there for that early in the morning. Yes. Yeah. Well, on the Friday, actually, you can leave at 6.30. Um, <laughs> 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 so, yes, there are long days. Yes. Yes. But. Yeah, I, I mean, when you get things like somebody coming up to you saying, yeah, pop that in for this competition and just, I can imagine that you get a lot of inspiration from there as well. Oh, definitely, yes. It's yes. definitely worth it then. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much for joining me. Um, like I said, for anybody that's watching us back on replay, hashtag replay, hashtag sorry I missed you. Do you pop any more questions in the comments? I'm sure Kirsty will come back and answer them for us. I will see you again. I know this week's going to be a bit different. I'm trying this Thursday. I'm going to do a pre-record and then put that up, but at the same time Thursday. So I will have to see how that goes. Um, but I will be Wendy Winchester and she makes some gorgeous jewellery. So keep your eyes open for that coming up on Thursday. Um, but thank you for those for watching and I shall see you very soon. Thank, thank you very much, Sharon. And thank, thank you to everyone who commented as well. Bye for now. Okay, bye. I'll put my links in the uh, comments.